I've had some sleep and I think it's time to come back to the Mike Nails thing with the advantage of having had some time to mull it over. I don't particularly want to defend anyone <laughs> involved in any of this, but there's such a thing as principle, right? So even if Zach has been horrible to me, even if Mills has said some things that I find less than good, a principle demands that I at least try to contextualize and provide information for people around all of this, because at the moment, a lot of people are knee jerk reacting on the basis of hearsay and rumor. And it's not really about Mills, it's about Zach. And it's important to contextualize that. So Zach and his gaming group really kind of burst onto everyone's public consciousness around 2011, if I'm remembering correctly, nearly a decade ago, with a photo spread in Maxim about his D&D &D with adult entertainers thing that he did, pod podcast, blog, all the rest of it. And this was really a, a boon in popularising D&D uh, &D at the time, which was having a, a bit of a lull, quite frankly. And you would think that this would be the kind of thing that would excite an interest and be boosted by the woke. We didn't use the term woke back then, really, but you know, you know who I'm talking about if I use that term. You would think that the kind of uh, claim to be progressive but not actually very progressive people would be all over that. You know, here's an artist living in L.A., with a female-dominated gaming group in a an open poly relationship with a bi woman, you know, bisexual um, and and lesbian women in a, in and out of the the group, you would think they would be all over that. But unfortunately, they were also involved in adult entertainment, and that seems to be the thing that really stuck in certain people's craw. Many of the same people who preach about tolerance and acceptance and understanding and compassion and, and all the rest of it and how we need a, a diverse community, uh, all, all of that, most of which I agree with in principle, but in practice these people often turn out to be the opposite of what they claim to be. And this was indeed one of those cases because Zach's group and Zach and his girlfriend at the time and plenty of other people, including Satine, were subjected to horrendous harassment from exactly the kind of people you wouldn't expect to do that. Woke people. They were worried that this was somehow creating unrealistic expectations or was uh, perpetuating the objectivization of, of, of women or, or something. So you, all of that good stuff, certainly from their point of view, good stuff, and from my point of view, the whole thing was very good, wasn't enough to offset that one thing they had to be absolutely 100% pure. And so they were all subjected to enormous harassment. I know, I was there, I pushed back against it. Not to white knight, but again, just because it's the right thing to do. And I've been on the receiving end of that kind of harassment before as well. People trying to counsel me. Fortunately, for me at least, the culture around that wasn't quite so powerful. There weren't so many of them then. They weren't this kind of finely honed mob that they are now and they were unable to really stop me doing anything that I wanted to. Things have changed since then, things have gotten a lot worse, but even back then people were trying to cancel him, cancel them, to harass and bully the people in his group, offline and out of the community. And these were exactly the opposites of the kinds of people you'd expect. Oh sure, there were a few you know, far right nutters saying, you know, this this is this is uh, degenerate. We shouldn't be allowing this sort of thing in the community. But, but by and large, for the most part, it was the the wokey types that were really leading the leading the charge on this. Like I say, I've been in that situation, and you develop a kind of siege mentality, and you want to fight back. You want to push back. Uh, I do that a lot. Or I, I did that a lot. I've tried to let it go more <laughs> of late but Zach was and is monomaniacal and obsessive he's me dialed up to 11 when it comes to defending himself and, def and at the time defending the people that were in his in his group and defending his girlfriend 
And so he got this reputation for being extremely dogged in fighting back against the slightest slight against him or any of his players. And you know what? Fair dues to him back back then. Um, I don't know where he got the energy, but he was absolutely relentless and he did get a lot of people to, to back off. And at the time, I think that was largely a good thing. It was showing up people's hypocrisy. Uh, it was preventing harassment of women and sexual minorities in gaming. So that's where a lot of this comes from. He should have ticked, or his group should have ticked, a lot of these diversity boxes for, for a lot of people. But that one thing, adult entertainment, was enough for them to try and cancel him, and he fought back, which a lot of people don't. And that created a hell of a lot of bad blood and created an obsession with Zack in mirror image of his own obsessional fighting back. Now, 4E, 4th edition, was a disaster, at least in D&D terms. It didn't really please anybody. And the only times D&D has really toppled from the top position were at the, the, the fag end of AD&D 2nd uh, edition, when White Wolf games were ascendant and actually overtook D&D for a few months in terms of sales. And during 4th ed, when there was a mass decamping from D&D to Pathfinder, which was the, the, the biggest game for a while, at least in the States, I don't know about globally, and to the old school Renaissance and others. People just abandoned 4th edition in droves. It was popular with a subset. In some ways it reached a new audience, but in in D and D terms, even though it was still the eight hundred pound gorilla, it was a, it was largely a failure in D and D's context. And the OSR had become culturally powerful in the D and D space, and that's how Pundit RPG Pundit and Zach really came to the attention of people in Wizards of the Coast looking to create a new edition of D and D. Zack and Pundit are really two sides of the OSR coin. Pundit's much more traditionalistic, much more old-fashioned, whereas Zack represented the kind of do-it-yourself, wilder, crazier end of the OSR. So given their success and their prominence, for whatever reason, good or bad, it's not surprising at all that the people behind D&D would look to them for some input. And not only them, they went to a lot of a lot of other people. And 5th edition, as a result, I think, has been a huge success up to a point, though that steam seems to be slowly being let out of D&D. Um, that, that forward momentum seems to be dissipating. But, but regardless, certainly compared to 4th edition, 5th edition has been an absolute juggernaut. So whatever input these people seem to have had, however much you dislike them. Overall, it seems to have been positive. And it's Mills who went out and approached these people. Now, at the time, of course, uh, Zach's controversies weren't actually that big. Uh, but because they were consulted, because their names came out uh, in the credits, you know, that, those same people who had been obsessively harassing Zach and his player group and complaining about Pundit for a long time and about other people, myself included, uh, though not in relation to D&D, obviously they went absolutely ballistic and they started spreading all kinds of rumours and nastiness and accusing Zach of uh, harassment and so on and um, hate speech and God knows, God knows what else. Things got well out of hand just as they are now, over on basically online bullshit that is a mute or a block away from never bothering you ever again, right? Now, extended online har harassment can be horrible. This is true. Zach is particularly dogged and determined. But you still have to take into account that by this point, he had been a subject of constant harassment and had developed that siege mentality that I was talking about. Now, Meals had exchanged a lot of emails with him, consulted with him over over 5th edition. And, you know, people have a right to face their accuser. They have a right to know what they've been accused of. But this seems to be the, the point of connection 
between Mills and Zach that has everyone up in arms. So a lot of people were sending a lot of hate publicly and privately. Zach's way when it was, when it emerged that he was consulted because he'd fought back against this harassment way back when, when all this started. I think Zach takes it too far. I think he's, he's too monomaniacal and obsessive. I think he could do with letting a lot of it go, but he hadn't. That ship had sailed. And I understand why he fought back quite so hard as he did. And Mills talked to him about it. That That's really it. Whether or not Mills revealed the names of some of the people who were involved in, in accusing Zach of all kinds of horrible things or, or whatever, this is a point of contention. Zach claims to have all the files and receipts and um, to, to have saved it all because all of their interactions been online. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But what it all it really seems from the available evidence is that Zach suggested that some of these people had long time gripes, long time access to grind against him, and Mills confirmed that. Not that anyone was particularly shy of going after Zach publicly. Anyway, you know, his harshest critics, just like my harshest critics, they're not shy about attaching their name to the stuff that they say. And many of the accusations get overblown and ridiculous. Yeah, it's a game of telephone or Chinese whispers if you want to be mildly racist. And these things build. The accusations become worse over time, even though there's not really any evidence for any of them. And, and that's it. Yeah, that Mills consulted with Zach before the, the harsher, nastier uh, rumours about Zach came out and that he gave the man a chance to defend himself and may have confirmed that some of the people uh, spreading the rumours and trying to cancel Zach were indeed the people trying to do that and what they were saying. That's it. So this whole Fire Mike Mills thing is an insane overreaction to what seems to have been someone just trying to get to the truth bothering to talk to someone about the accusations that were made against them and to get their side that's it and maybe possibly maybe have having let a few names slip resulting in Zach then challenging their accusations towards him that's really it this overreaction is insane and the accusations are getting wilder and crazier talking about victims and harassment when as much or more harassment and victimization seems to have been directed in the opposite direction and we now have this huge torch wielding mob directing har harassment and it is harassment towards Mills trying to get him cancelled going after anyone and everyone who's had any association with him and trying to pressure them to distance themselves or to come out and make some kind of public declaration against him right and I've had that happen to me too unfortunately Satine severed most connections with me over it over bullshit stuff that wasn't true. Now, so I can't help but have sympathy and empathy for people in that situation. And that is harassment. And it's coming from the people who claim to be against harassment. And hypocrisy really sticks in my craw. Even if we take the absolute worst interpretation of what happened here, what Meals is guilty of, it's all online bullshit. And Mills, at worst, made a judgment mistake. That's forgivable, and we should all be more forgivable, uh, more forgiving and tolerant. This just seems to be leftover hate for Zach, who has proven to be somewhat impervious uh, to being cancelled to an extent. Seems to be the hatred for him spilling over, and much of that based on hearsay and rumour, and nobody bothering to look into it for themselves or to get on Zach's side. And otherwise, good and decent people reacting to unsound allegations. Not really knowing what's going on, not knowing the context, and hearing the worst and just going with it. I mean, Mills has had, he's tried to play the game. He's had woke takes on gatekeeping and other issues in the hobby. But that wasn't enough. It's never enough. Right? You can never be pure enough. And it's the people who are claiming to be fighting for tolerance and understanding and compassion that are the worst people for actually embodying those values. If you're joining in this pylon against Mills, you're not the good guy here. 
pressuring anyone and everyone remotely associated with D&D to cancel him, trying to get critical role and others to come out against him, trying to sever his friendships. This isn't an inclusive or tolerant community. It's a hate mob in a purity spiral. Males doesn't appear to have actually done anything particularly wrong, badly judged, perhaps, if we take the least charitable interpretation. The person you actually hate is Zack, and I would remind you, even there, that while accusations have been made, nothing's been proven. And there are principles at stake here of innocence until proven guilty, right? If you were accused of something horrendous, Shouldn't you get your day in court? Shouldn't you have the right to face your accuser? Shouldn't you have the right to make a case? Put yourself in the shoes of other people in this situation, like Meals as well, who just sought to revitalize D&D by tapping into a vibrant online scene and, and gets all this for it. How is that tolerant? How is that forgiving? How is that compassionate? It, it, it isn't. And if you're participating in this mob without having actually bothered to look into anything, you're not the good guys. You're just not. Zang. The gallows is cold and the gibbet is lonely. We'll make things hard for you here. The gallows is cold and the gibbet is lonely. We'll make things hard for you, Joey, my dear.